Det är rätt nummer A. This week we're going to talk about forgiveness. We've heard this before so many times, but somehow it still seems difficult. But it is difficult, especially these days. Stuff is coming at us from so many different directions. Many people post things to Facebook and Instagram and so forth, what I call anti-social media, about these things. This is possibly because we have been closed indoors for the better part of three years in closed quarters because of this pandemic. I just say it what it is. It was planned. Nothing comes out of the ground that fast and sweeps all over the world that fast unless it's planned. As a result of this, we are beginning closed up for so long and getting on each other's nerves more and more every day. But that is not why I want to go into it. Because on its face, it seems to be very much a concept of Yahweh Elohim. But the world reads it like this. Be strong enough to forgive without hearing an apology. And the world hears that and hears something different. I can't forgive anyone without an apology. Hmm. That's not what the Bible says. This I implied here is a big part of the problem. This I implied here means it's on your strength alone you do this. On your strength alone? What? Mm -mm. We cannot do this on our strength alone. Because of our thinking that we can, this is one of the most controversial teachings in the Bible. This teaching on the command to forgive, one particular example of this is in Matthew, the 18th verse, chapter rather where Yeshua gives the most extensive teaching on forgiveness in the Bible. And he tells the story of a, an unforgiving servant. He tells the, the story about a man who had been forgiven a massive debt, but will then turn around and not forgive his fellow servant. Comparatively, and I will. <laughs> this is all planned. And not forgive his fellow servant comparatively for a smaller debt. And we can find this in Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 21st verse. Matthew, 
Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 21st verse. Then Kepha, or Peter, came to him and said, Master, how often shall I, my brother, sin against me, and I forgive him? Up to seven times? This is a veiled reference to Amos, the second chapter, the first verse. Let's turn to Amos, the second chapter, the first verse. So says Yahweh Elohim, for three transgressions of Moab, yea, for four. Note that it keeps increasing. <laughs> And this is a big sin. I will not turn away from it because he burned the bones of the king of Edom in, into lime. Now, I will send a fire upon Moab and it shall devour the places of Kiriath and Moab shall die with great noise, with shouting with the sound of a trumpet and I will cut off the judge from its midst and will kill all its rulers with him says Yahweh so says Yahweh Elohim for three transgressions of Judah yea for four I will not turn away from it I will not turn away from it. Not you. I will not turn away from it. Because they have despised the laws of Yahweh Elohim and have not kept his commandments and their lies after which their fathers walked led them astray. But I will send the fire upon Judah and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem. So says Yahweh Elohim, for three transgressions of Israel, yea, for four, note the increase each time. I will not turn away from it because they sold the righteous for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. In other words, I will forgive them when I will forgive and you will do the same. Continuing in Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 22nd verse. Yeshua said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times but up to 70 times seven for the mathematically challenged or the forgiveness challenged, that is 490 times. But additionally, how intelligent, unintelligent are you? If you stand there and count out 495 times that somebody does something to you and doesn't forgive or for repent, the Bible does say at some point you walk away from someone and separate yourself from them. It doesn't say anything about your attitude toward them at this time. But the longer you stay there, the, the less that attitude will be in their favor. And it's better to you to walk away. 23, because of this, the reign of the heavens is like a certain man, a sovereign who 
wished to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was unable to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. How? This is where you kind of have to read between the lines. If the children and wife were sold, they were going to be working that that debt that, that, that off. Mm -hmm. 26. Then the servant fell down before his master, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I shall pay you all. And the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. And the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. That wasn't nearly what he, the 10,000 talents that he would have forgiven him. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat saying, pay me what you owe. 29. Then his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him saying, have patience with me and I shall pay you all. But he would not. And went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. And when his fellow servants saw what had been done, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master told, called him and said to him, wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt, seeing you begged me. Should you also not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, as I also had compassion on you? And his master was raw and delivered him not to the prison, to the torturers. <laughs> until he should pay all that was due to him. So also my heavenly father shall do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. And he is punished for his lack of forgiveness by being thrown into prison by his master until the text says that he should pay the last penalty. And that's quite a while because you don't get much in return while you're in jail. Anybody that's been there knows you don't make it nearly as much in jail for an hour as you do on the outside. And the haunting words that come at the end of Yeshua's parable came from Yeshua himself. And in Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 35th verse, it says, my heavenly father will also do the same to you. If each of you does not forgive his brother, from your heart, that's a little bit different from your heart. Mm -hmm. You feel it also. 
So this is a command to forgive and not to forgive superficially, but to, but to forgive at a profound level from the heart, from the heart. I say that this is controversial because as people living in a fallen world, we can be sinned against in profound ways. I won't name any because everybody here has their own story. And some of them are much more profound than mine. You all know how evil and vindictive people are these days. But we must forgive anyway. We're commanded by Yeshua Messiah to forgive. But knowing that we are commanded to forgive does not answer all the questions, does it? No, and I think many people wonder, okay, Yeshua wants me to forgive, but should I only forgive someone if, the, if they've asked for forgiveness? Or should I forgive those who aren't sorry over their sin? That's the hang up. That's the hang up. This question is one believers spend the most time talking about. The question, though, is understanding why. You don't think on that level because you can't think on that level naturally. We must know as believers who have been forgiven of our sin by Yeshua that we must forgive others. And so many times when we are in the midst of our personal trials, we have forgotten that he did that. We know about it, but it kind of gets lost in the fog of our insane jealousy and anger when we are sinned against. But the real practical question is, should I forgive if someone's not sorry that they have sinned against me? And more importantly, if the person is still alive to forgive, should I forgive if someone has not asked for forgiveness? And that's something we don't think about when we are in our stuff, I'll say. <coughs> Sometimes the person dies before you get that chance. That's on you. They, they did what they did before they died, and that's still on their record. You don't want it still on yours. This is where most of us fail. But not a test of man but a test of Yahweh and a test of scripture. That's a bad thing to do. This exact issue actually raises, even by text of scriptural example, things that we don't think about when we're in that thing. You've got a text like, Mark, the 11th chapter, the 25th verse. Mark, the 11th chapter, the 25th verse. But Yeshua put a little test in here for his disciples to learn from. Earlier in the day, he had passed a, a fig tree. And few figs were on it. Seeing this, he cursed the tree. Go 
go back a little bit. Mark the 11th chapter, the 20th verse. And passing by in the morning, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Then Peter, remembering, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you did curse is withered away. And Yeshua answering him said unto them, Have faith in Yahweh Elohim. For verily I say unto you that whoever shall say unto this mountain, Remove thyself and cast thyself into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that what if, what if, whatever he says, shall be done. Whatsoever he says shall be done unto him. Therefore I say unto you that everything that you ask for, praying, believe that you, re you receive it and it shall come upon you. And when you are praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father who is in the heavens will also forgive you your trespasses. For if you do not forgive, neither will your father who is in the heavens forgive your trespasses. And so this sounds like Yeshua is saying, saying that we forgive whether someone has asked for forgiveness or not, whether they are not or sorry or not, we just forgive. If we're standing there praying, we forgive. The truth of this is, the forgiveness is for you, not the other person. As Yeshua said earlier, by forgiveness, you clean your slate. Because if there is anything sinful on your slate, it blocks any blessings that you have asked for. Even something as small as a tree that was supposed to be dead in that season, bearing no fruit. That was an example. And that's the, not the stuff that you ask for. But the stuff you ask for is healing your illnesses. That's blocked too, if you got stuff on your slate. Anything that you have on your slate at that point is blocked. But then you've got a text like this that proves it. Luke, the 17th chapter, the third verse. Luke, the 17th chapter, the third verse. Take heed to yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day comes back to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. So you have these two teachings of Yeshua. Yeshua on the one hand saying, if you're standing there praying and you realize that there's a problem with your brother, then forgive him so that you will be heard in your prayer. And then you've got this statement of Yeshua that says, forgive your brother when he repents. And so how do we resolve this dilemma? The ancient Greek word here for offenses is scandalon. G46, 24, 25. 
G4625. And it comes from the word for a bent stick. The stick that springs a trap or sets the trap or baits the trap. It also was used for a stumbling block, something that people trip over, like our unforgiven sins. Remember, any sins not forgiven are still on your record and will block your path. into the kingdom of Elohim and anything you ask for until you get there. This is something that a lot of us blow by because we want to hold on to that anger and do something about it ourselves <laughs> and within this framework we can think of forgiveness on the other hand as an attitude that we cultivate in our hearts and souls Yeshua in Mark 11 is talking about forgiveness as an attitude that we cultivate in our prayer lives and our everyday lives when he says, if you're standing there praying, and he is assuming we're doing this on a daily basis. When you are doing this, forgive anything that comes to your mind that is weighing on it. Some have started to do this as a daily part of their cleansing process, which it is. We never heard about this before. And some of what we hear now, we still don't know much about it. Because there's not much about it in the Bible. But you have to do the little bit that is there completely. And this is part of the cleansing process. This is cleansing for you clearing your blessings to come to you instead of going off somewhere else and being blocked by you. Yeshua was saying, release that person from your anger, from your bitterness, from the penalty of your sin right then and there he's talking about cultivating an action in our hearts we might say that it is the willingness to extend forgiveness but we sell the matter in our hearts <clears throat> whether or not they are sorry whether or not they are repentant whether or not they have asked or whether or not they have remained silent. We cultivate this attitude in time. The action of forgiveness is what Yeshua is talking about in general. But here in Luke 17, he was specifically speaking of Judas Iscariot. And he said to the disciples, it is impossible but that offenses will come. But woe to him whom they come against. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck and he were cast into the sea that he should offend one of his little ones. Take heed to yourselves if your brother trespasses against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he trespasses against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turns again to you 
saying, I repent. You shall forgive him. And the apostles said to the teacher, give us more faith. They knew this help was hard. They knew it. Give us more faith. And Yeshua said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, that's the smallest seed on the planet. That ain't much. You might say to this sycamine tree, be rooted up and be planted in the sea. And it would obey you along with any other requests that you have. And all of these requests that you have are blocked by all the times that you s fail to forgive someone for what you they do to you whatever it is this is hard stuff if you do it the right way but it will clear up the blessings that are coming your way that you asked for and it clears up a lot of stuff that, not all of it, some things he doesn't give you because it's not time yet. That's what I was talking about with Dwayne this morning. Some stuff will glorify him in his time. But other things that less important to you, not to him. But these things will be done if there's nothing blocking them on your part. Verse 7. But which of you has a servant plowing or feeding will say to him immediately after he has come from the field, come, recline. Will he not say, prepare something so that I may eat? and gird yourself and serve me until I eat and drink and afterward you shall eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. I think not. Verse 10. So likewise you when you have done all the things commanded, you say, we are unprofitable servants, for we have done what we ought to do. Sink that in. So likewise, you, when you shall have done all these things, including repenting and forgiving someone that has not repented to you. We are unprofitable servants, for we have done what we ought to do. I think we can conclude it this way, that we should be cultivating the attitude of forgiveness in our heart whenever we realize that we have something against our brother or sister in Messiah who has sinned against us. We at this point realize that we have something against our brother or sister. And at this point, we also have a problem. And we should immediately go into prayer to forgive this sin and clear our record. Otherwise, we have scandal on or debris blocking our way into the kingdom, as well as these sins blocking. This is a lesson that the church itself is in the process of learning the hard way and trying to help Yahweh Elohim to curse the Jewish people for their rejection and help in the crucifying of Messiah. 
the curse came back on the church worse than ever. How many churches of millions are now just a few? That was a curse. If someone seems ripe for judgment or discipline of Yahweh, let him do it. Not you, it's not your job. And that concludes the churches. Get out of his way. Yahweh Elohim doesn't need you as an instrument of his judgment. only as an instrument of his love. That's the reason that 144,000 of us are going to be left here is not to emulate the wrath of Yahweh. That's his job. But ours is to show the world a, a final display of his love and forgiveness and a preview of what the world will be like under the rule of a loving God or Elohim. This is why although the world is used to meanness, bitterness, and much cruel levity and other forms of uncouth conduct, the rules and commandments of Yahweh Elohim are what we are to, to display to the world before Yahweh returns to save it. They think he's going to return to destroy it. He's going to make it better. The world does not believe in his way of life. We're going to show them a pristine example of it starting now. That's why these things are important to us right now. And our lives are better for them. Ephesians, the fourth, fourth chapter, the 29th verse. Let not any filthy word go out of your mouth. Say that again. Let not any filthy word go out of your mouth. I don't say anything to anybody, not, not pointing my fingers out there, nothing. And say it again, in case anybody didn't hear it. Let not any filthy word go out of your mouth. But if any is good, to building up in respect of need, that it may give grace to the ones here. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of Yahweh, by whom you are sealed until the day of redemption. And let us not turn that day of redemption into simple visitation, if you know what I'm talking about. 31. Let all bitterness and, bitterness and wrath and anger and tumult and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Yahweh for Messiah's sake has forgiven you. This is a command to get rid of bitterness and all the rest that goes along with it. And it's listed here in Ephesians 4th chapter, the 31st verse. We just read that. We have to fight bitterness. And if we're not willing to cultivate an attitude of forgiveness, then that is by definition a clinging on to bitterness and anger. 
some of this anger and clamor and violence in the street is about things that are in the past. These people that go on about slavery as if it never ended. I can show you some countries where it hasn't. Mm -hmm. This isn't one of them. There are some that, had, that hasn't. You visit those, you'll shut up. <laughs> if we are believers, we had better let this stuff go. Those who are not willing to let it go, this stuff will erode the Holy Spirit within you to a point where it will not be strong enough to lift you to the clouds when Master Yeshua comes back. Those are the ones that on the corner like this and going nowhere. <laughs> aren't listening to his word if you are spoiling to avenge these acts yourself whose job are you taking upon yourself Romans the 12th chapter the 16th verse be unanimous among yourselves not high minded but accommodating the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion, as some are. Not repaying anyone evil for evil. Procuring that which is good, not only in the sight of Yahweh, but even in the sight of all men. And especially as an example of the world to come for those who will somehow want to taste it from your example. If it can be done as much as possible on your part, live in peace with all men. Not defending yourselves, dearly beloved, but rather give place unto the wrath of Yahweh. For it is written, vengeance is mine. Whose? Mine. His. I, he will repay, says Yahweh. That is a sin that will erode your soul. That's constant acts of vengeance even in your mind think hard against someone the same rule applies to lust thinking about a woman or man in your heart is still sin why is this any different That is a sin that will erode your soul, will damage our relationship with Yeshua Messiah, will damage our own souls, and will damage our relationships with others. And we need to let go of bitterness. It's interesting that Ephesians 4.31 goes right into Ephesians 4.32, and it says, be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as Yahweh and Messiah also have forgiven you. Any questions? Comments? Yes. Father, for blessing with this 
This is truly hard. Yes, it is. As I open the lines in the mornings to pray, I feel I'm okay. But that's our selfish nature to think we're okay. Then I think of all the times that I've been sick, and I would question, Father, what did I, what did I do? Is there something that I'm not doing right? And it's funny that you're bringing up this, because on Tuesday, Ray's car had a flat, and he told me to meet him at the gas station. Then when I turn around by the gas station, I see my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. He looked at me. I haven't seen him for years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And right at that gas station, Jean-Luc was just like from here to your door, standing, waiting for rain. Mm -hmm. And I kept on looking, and he would look at me, and I'm thinking, Father. I started getting angry. And I said, Mrs. this is why I'm sick. I thought of that because all this stuff triggered and I didn't move and Adrian was behind me and my son was there. He hurt him. So he figured hurting him would hurt me for leaving him. Then I ended up in the, that night, I, felt, I couldn't sleep because I thought I was going to have a heart attack. My left arm was hurting so bad I couldn't move. My veins were just, I felt like they were going to explode. My right leg felt like it was going to explode. I couldn't move my back. And I said, it's like the spirit was talking to you, Patrick, and I said, this is why I'm sick. I thought I'd forgiven him. I'm not forgiven him. And it's causing me this pain. Then I thought of other people and said, Father, I can't continue praying if I still got things that still haunted me. And as I laid at the hospital, they said, your liver is damaged. And I kept on saying, Father, I asked Father, if I hurt somebody, help me to dig in me so I could ask for forgiveness. And I just, just felt so sick and I'm thinking, I'm tired of feeling sick. Then I had gotten a, a, a message that my aunt had died. I'm thinking, God, so much. And it's just what you were saying and I'm writing everything down. Our, my soul has been eroded from all this junk. When does it stop? But, but realize our Father in Heaven, we have no idea what His mercy and His grace is. And He is so merciful and graceful. And mm -hmm. on our own, we can't do anything. Right. But I right. thought that, that I had forgiven hatred and I had this unbelievable pain. And you know what? We're all physical human beings if, for a reason. Too. If you live through it, exactly, you're endurance. given another chance. Endurance. I kept that thinking, who did mm -hmm. I hurt? Sometimes we don't know these things. Who did I hurt mm -hmm. that caused somebody else pain? And I'm thinking I'm the only one with the pain. But maybe I did something or said something that caused somebody else to have pain. I'm thinking, Father, show me so I could make meds. The and church is. you said is just like was on point. I'm like, oh my gosh. The church is for so long leaned on that thing about they have to forgive the, the, uh, repent the first and then you can forgive them no 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 forgiveness is up to you the stuff that they do is on them and they t carry that on you gotta get yours cleaned up and that's for you mm hmm I, I, I got stuck. I wanted to. Believe me, I wanted to stop him and say, 
Why? Why did you hurt me? I can't forgive you. I, I want him to, I wanted him to say something to me. And he would not get out of the car and I stood stiff. I, I couldn't say it. Yeah. There, there was just so much. And I'm thinking, what I do? And he would not move, and I didn't move. And she looks looking, waiting for me, not realizing, baby, don't look. Don't look. And maybe, I, I, maybe he needed to look so he was looking up. No more than that. I did tell him, though. I did tell him because I didn't want him ever for Adrian to say, well, I've seen your mother, but she never did anything. I, I don't want that to be put on me because I did all my best, even through the stuff that we went through. I encouraged him to go and be with his dad. But it was just too much. Yeah. I, if I could say something, I think that we as, I don't want to say Christians, we as saints, I think, with all of the flesh that we still deal with on a day to day basis, I think one of the deepest things that we have not done is to learn how to forgive. And that's a saint. I'm not talking about the street people. I'm not talking about the worldly people. Saints are the hardest people to forgive. Because I find myself, if I do something, I'm the first person to go to that person and say, hey, if I did this, if I did that, I find that other saints are not going to come to you and they're not going to ask for forgiveness. It's the hardest thing I have seen in the church of God, where saints are the ones that are so unforgiving. Mm -hmm. And you think it's the people out in the world that are going to It's more so the saints. Yeah. Because they, I mean, it's just, because I find myself doing it, and a lot of times people say, Mom, well, you didn't even do anything. Why are you apologizing? I said, because they're not going to apologize. They're not going to say anything. So you gotta, you got to break the ice and you got to figure it out to break the ice. Mm -hmm. Because I find that saints are the hardest people to forget. Mm -hmm. And that's very sad. Because mm -hmm. with this, what the pastor was just reading yes, and all yes. what he's reading, it tells us first that we need to forget. Mm -hmm. right. So many times, however many times, 70 times 7. But mm -hmm. you're not going to find it in the church of God. They will not they skip over it because they lean on they have to repent first and then you can forgive a lot of people are as, as bullheaded about forgiving I mean repenting as you are and not always you but they have to repent first before I forgive but that was the what the churches taught for years but a lot of that stuff, you have to read between the lines to see what's happening there. The only one that has that option over all others is the creator. You don't have that option. Mm -hmm. But my dear friend that I lost communication with her, that Rashida and you and I were in the car and remember yeah. we seen it. I had sent a poster saying uh, just something nice that I got unresponded and it was erased immediately. Because mm -hmm. I said to myself, why is it that even among, like you said, saints, mm -hmm. you feel like I'm okay. I don't need to say nothing. 
And but then he'd say, well, how many times do you want me? You want me to say sorry, but you were the offender, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, I don't get it. And I'm like you, Stan. And people tell me, what is it? Do you like torture or people hurt you and you still go to them? And they don't understand. Like you just said it on the spot. They're believers, and this is where you're like, you come on. You gotta understand that. You were the offender. You need to also. It, it can't just always be from the person, the person, and just that it gets tired. And people say, "What you love, people to hurt you, mm-hmm. and why do you always have to say sorry? It wasn't your fault. Mm-hmm. And it's not about. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. for me. I I have to do it because I'm. If I need to, if, well, if I need to be forgiven from the Heavenly Father, I need to learn. No matter how much hurts me, to forgive those who hurt me. Even though they might think that, yeah, you know, and, and it's and it's ongoing. It's tiresome. It's tiresome. But I, I thank the Father for this amazing, amazing sermon, Pastor, because I sure needed it. I sure needed it, and I and I need my soul to stop being so eroded because I caused it. I need to let go. And I'm asking the Father, oh Father, please. Because this sickness, how much more are they going to tell me I have? I'm too young to be feeling old, and I'm too old to be feeling pity. And it's just like, I, I, I just, I have no words. I, I, I'm just so humbled and grateful, Pastor. I needed this. Not me. Sherry. Oh, boy. Pastor Curtis, we get the Father to praise for yes. using you. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Because it is so amazing. The mm-hmm. Father is amazing. He used you yes. for this sermon. And you said one year, when we're praying collectively in our own personal prayers, we need to ask for forgiveness. We need to cleanse ourselves, as you stated, daily, each and every day. Mm -hmm. And we need to learn to forgive in order for us to heal, we got to forgive. And if we don't forgive, we're going to continue to live in the past, and we're going to be back in the past, and we can't heal. we got to let that old whatever, hurt, pain, sorrow, Whatever it is, mm-hmm. hurt, pain, sorrow, painful things, we gotta ask for forgiveness mm-hmm. so we can move on with the courses of our lives. And you said it really rolled you because yeah. you keep mm-hmm. looking back. Yes. Mm-hmm. You said it. You said it, Pastor. The Father gave you those words. You said it will erode you. An erosion. Mm-hmm. It's nothing. And the worst thing I see with it is all these people still talking about slavery. That was years ago. Forget it. And it says plainly in this Bible, nobody that was guilty of that will get away with it. And that takes out of your hands. That's in his hands. And don't enjoy it too much when you see it. Mm-hmm. There are times when you will forgive someone, and you still have to acknowledge that they're too dangerous to be around. Mm-hmm. You will never be with anybody with them again. Mm-hmm. You said, remove yourself from it. Mm-hmm. Right. But you got to keep the ball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pastor Curtis, I have been around people who say, I, I said, you know, I feel like you said, so I meant to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you needed that. So I told you that. You turn around and walk the other way. No thoughts along with it. Walk the other what way. I did. Mm-hmm. But it still hurts. But it was a continuous thing. 
Mm -hmm. You collected tissue for a butcher day. Mm -hmm. Would you, the people on Parker is stiffing and jabbing because you know, they know it hurts you. But I come to the conclusion. The Bible said, with as much as in you. Mm -hmm. So I move, I move out the way of that person. But it mm -hmm. still hurts. And yeah. I tried to forgive that person mm -hmm. for saying these things, but they don't know. But it hurts like all out the door. It still hurts. I forgive them when I said my prayer, Lord, forgive me for I hurt somebody that I didn't know I hurt today. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for my trespasses and my sin. I said that every day. But the hurt hurts. It hurts. Mm -hmm. And to forgive somebody, be Giving you this is not good. Thank you. Thank the Father for giving you this. Mm -hmm. Sandy. I think a lot of times we play the victim mm -hmm. because we, you know, because you know we can ask someone on to do certain things, and then we play the victim as if we did nothing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we have to acknowledge what we do, you mm -hmm. know, because we can't play the victim all the time because. It's just like a marriage. When a marriage break up, it takes two people to make it. It takes two people to break it. Mm -hmm. But then you hear the wife say it was the husband, and he did this, and you hear the husband say it was it's the wife. It takes two. <coughs> it, 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 it takes two in a relationship. So I think a lot of times people want to pay, play the victim because mm -hmm. it makes them feel bad. Right? Yeah. But you you can't be the victim all the time because you you cause that person <laughs> to say what they say. Or you keep coming yeah. back around no that more. person. You provoke yeah. this person yeah. to yeah. say certain things and then you want to play the victim. We can't play the victim. We got to play our part in what we have done in order for that person to cause pain upon us. Come on. Yeah. Stop subjecting yourself to that person. You know they're going to hurt you. Yeah. And like what Rhonda said, we're put here at first. That's right. Mm -hmm. And everything for a reason. But we have to forgive. That's one thing you've got to do. Drum into people, especially saints. They've got to learn to forgive. They hurt you. They, I have been hurt by church members. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. mm -hmm. We're not going to ask too and much. We're trying to forgive them. Well, we, we have, have person. We, we have, have hurt church and we have. We have. have. So we just don't know. Coming back, back and forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And nothing new under the sun. So right. Right. Yeah. everything goes That's around. Right. Yeah. We, we have hurt. They we have hurt. hurt. You know, yeah. you know yeah. after, yeah. That after, yeah. after that Ruby. incident. I end up in the hospital the following day, early in the morning, because I just like, I'm going to have a heart attack. And I dealt with this. But the following day, on um, Thursday, I did something that I wasn't, I didn't think I was going to do. I called my brother God. I said, Father, I said, if he's been in my mind, I, I'm just going to check up on him and tell him that I love him that I've been thinking of him. And I prayed about it. I was sweating bullets, Pastor. I was sweating bullets because I was thinking, oh gosh, he's going to tell me off. I don't want to hear from you. I hate you. But all the things he's always said. But I, I thank the Father because out of the whole week that I got through a lot, it was my only positive. Because Don accepted my call and he were on the line for 45 minutes. Good. He said he was so grateful that I called him. I can't believe he would call me. I hadn't even heard from my sister smiling. Dad, you of all people called me. And I can't believe it. And he was in awe that I called him. And he asked why. He says, because you're my brother. And I love you. I could have said, you hurt me. You did this. I had to figure out because of the pain. Where a father use me. Where do I need to start? And he did that for me. And I was so grateful. I was so grateful because I said, I haven't been in the church for about a month. And just last week, I said, I came. I went back home with pain and said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come. And I'm going to give that report. But it was, and then you started pre preaching about this. Like, oh my gosh, it's like, he heard me. You know, but I, I, I do apologize because it seems like every time there's a sermon, I have something to say and I cry, but that's just me. 
I am not a phony. Everybody knows who I am and what I am and what my children are and my husband. And I can't help to use them as an example because I'm trying to get it right. I'm, I'm trying to make it to the kingdom. I want to be called this child. And we have to realize we are saved by grace mm -hmm. and not of ourselves. It's a gift. It's a, and our works are important, but they don't give us salvation. Mm -hmm. This is the desire that I want so mm -hmm. bad because I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. And he's so if merciful. Just think about tomorrow, tomorrow is promised. Mm -hmm. This could be my last day. I don't know. It could None be anybody's. Right. Mm -hmm. right. right. We're all put here at risk. It's true. So. Thurman. The two verses came to mind in uh, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17 and 18. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear, bear sin because of him. Verse 18. You shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Those verses came to mind. Yep. Whenever he punctuates it with himself, there is nothing higher to punctuate something with mm -hmm. than himself. Mm -hmm. And he said, whenever you see that I am Yahweh, pause and read that thing again, whatever it is. And ever, whenever he's, 